Hello, good morning everybody. How are you? Uh, are you all calm down after Christmas now? Get back to normal again. Or are you getting ready for a party tonight? Um, hello Mandy, Janet, Lisa, Biz. Hello. Oh, is it like a Nova Scotia at the moment, Biz? Um, hi Jane and Christine and oh, Liz Deleuze. What a romantic name, Liz Deleuze. Sound like um, a 1950s film star. Um, hi Jill, Jan, Helen, Jackie. Hello to you. Hello Denise. Um, someone's been shopping. Hello, Anne, Debbie, Lynn to you as well. Hello, Dorothy and Jill and Linda and Sheila and Julie and Amanda and Deborah and Eleanor. Sorry if I miss anybody. Hello, Lynn and Sam and Janet. Oh, here we go. Janet in New York. Hello. Happy New Year, says Sue, and to you too. A bit calmer after all the floods in Thousand Oh, I hope you're all right after the floods. Um, hello, Alexandria. Hi, Megan. You're in for a big parcel on your way, aren't you? Hello, Biz Bloden. Uh, oh, sorry, Bloodwin. <laughs> <laughs> Changed your name, Bloodwin. Hello, Tina and Susan and Alison. Hi, Alan and Sue and Janet and Olive. Right, um, I'm a, I'm a bit um, I'm a bit unprepped again today. I was looking at uh, one of my uh, old books, older books, to look at some simple projects. So we're going to make a pincushion, but um, I haven't made one yet, so I can't show you what we're doing. But it's a little heart-shaped one and it's got a pocket on the front uh, that you can put scissors in and tie a ribbon through the holes as well. I'll show you in the book in a sec. Hello Mary Rose. First time live is that? Happy New Year says Ariane. First time live again. Anybody else first time today? Come and let us know. Um, Denise has got a winning bag. Oh, I'm glad that was quick wasn't it? Glad you got it. Hello Faye in Oregon. And that was that was Royal Mail as well. Gosh, and that only went out yesterday. Thursday? Yesterday? I can't remember. I think it was yesterday. Um, hello, Angie. I only started selling three months ago. Thank you very much. Angela, sorry. Um, Rainy in Somerset. Uh, Susan's a first timer. Hello, welcome along. Mary from Belgium, first time. Oh, May, sorry, from Belgium, first time. Hello. Um, Mary normally watches them afterwards. Hello, Norsk Bent, is that? First time here. Welcome. Good evening from Brisbane, says Norris. Uh, Wet and Dreary in Kent, says Sylvia. Hello, Bernadette and Brenda. Maddie, Amazon still has no ETR on delivery. I don't know why, because um, it's there. They should have it. So I wouldn't imagine they'll be too long before they go out. Oh, while we're talking, Maddie, um, I have made uh, taken some swatches of skin coloured fabric and I've been, I've been asked what colour skin tone that I've been using. So these are they. I mean, you can make her in any colour you like. She could be pink, black, white, yellow, green, spotty, whatever you want. But use a cotton. I haven't tried making her from something like um, a, a fleece or something stretchy. You could do that. It might distort her a little bit because she's been designed to, for use with cotton. Um, but... Um, yeah, the skin tones that I've used, we, this is what we've got. Let me show you. Just so you can see the difference. So that one is biscuit. That one's tan. Might help if I did that, wouldn't it? And then this one is caramel. I'm not very good at cutting. This is mink. And this one's cream. So these are all the colours they've got on the website. Obviously, you can use any colour that you like. Now, the, the new Maddie, the Maddie in the book, I use caramel. Um, for Robin here, I use tan, so he's a little bit darker. And the second Maddie that I made here, I need to get you the first Maddie. Just have a look at those. The second Maddie there with black hair, I'm not sure what colour that was, but it's not a colour that we have on the website. So just bear with me a second. Feast your eyes on those chaps because I've got the first original Maddie that I made sitting on a shelf over here. And she was in cream. Oh, there we go. So she's cream. All right. But you can use any colour that you like. Um, I've seen her made out of calico, and that works quite well. Calico has little flecks in it of the of the, of the seed pods, the cotton pods, um, but it does give quite a, a rustic look to to the doll. So those are the colours that we've got. So again, I'm not sure how much you need. You'll have to have a look in your book. Can't remember. I could have a look, couldn't I? I've got a book here. I'll do that in a minute. Nowhere for you to go, man. So you'll have to have a seat there. It's a bit odd, doesn't it? 
Um, so again, we have the cream. That one's called Mink. This is the caramel that I made the new Maddie out of. Tan that Robin's made out of. And the biscuit. The biscuit, the caramel. <coughs> Excuse me, we do have a sand, but we don't have much left, which is why I didn't bring it. Are the Tilda doll fabric. So those are the ones that Tilda uses. So that's, uh, that's what we've got. So I thought I'd show you those. Um, hi, Lisa. Happy New Year to you too. And what else have we got? Hello, Christina. Debbie's going to tackle the sewing room today. She says, wish her luck. I bet you don't get it finished. I bet you get waylaid and sit at the sewing machine. Uh, Julianne's Maddie book has arrived, ready to start. Oh, no. Christine's got a house full of COVID. Oh, hope, hopefully it's a mild one. Right. The other thing I've been asked, we don't, uh, the fabrics, let me show you the book just quickly. Because books are written so far in advance, so this one I started about 18 months ago, most of the fabrics aren't available anymore. Okay, you can see what I've got here, can't you? Um, but there's, I've tried to keep them quite generic, so a floral, you don't have to use these fabrics, um, a floral or a spotty, but you know, again, you can use whatever you like. The dressing gowns in fleece. The, I have used a lot of poppers. And... We do like poppers on the coat. They're ever so easy to use. It's an awful lot easier than making buttonholes and sewing buttons on. And we do have the poppers and tools on the website at the moment. So if you're if you're trying to get hold of your ingredients, <coughs> excuse me, um, then poppers are definitely there. We do have some fat quarters. Now for the little dress, and I've been asked a lot about this, it's actually the green one. That's it, that's the dress that she's wearing on the cover. We can't get hold of meterage. We've only got fat quarters, so I think you're going to need two fat quarters to make the dress because there's a lot of gathering around there. So you can see that's a little bit longer than the fat quarter. So I join two together and then use the remaining to make the top so you've got enough. So that's that and whoops so you yeah two fat quarter sets we are trying to get some more back in stock because i know they're going to sell out but that means that you've got two of the green you've also got two of the cutest little elephant blues you've got two of those two of those and two of those so you would be able to make quite a nice little collection if you like so she could have maybe the dress in one and then shorts in another you can make a little pajamas in another one of the fabrics um, but for most of these you're going to need two um, and we've also got the pink ones so there's five I think in each set one two three four five and again those are the fat quarter um, sets of fat quarters and so Lorna where's Lorna 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 oh for the Half Yard Club, is it possible to still claim the free month when using a gift subscription? I don't know, Lorna. I've not been asked that before. Um, could you email the team and ask the question? Claire, Claire's been really on it this week, actually. She was even answering questions on... Um, on Boxing Day, so uh, when they're supposed to have the whole week off, she has been there answering questions. Um, if you email info at halfyardsewingclub.com, then somebody will get back to and let you know. I'm, I'm sorry, but I should know that, shouldn't I? But I've not been asked that before, so I don't really know. Um, if, you, if you can't remember that email address, you can email me, but all I'll do is forward it to them anyway, because I don't have anything to do with the admin, so that they, they'll be able to answer the question for you. Um, Hazel, Happy New Year to all. Sorry that I haven't contacted before, but I'm 88 years young and I've just found out how to do it. <laughs> Welcome along. <laughs> nice to have you here, Hazel. Well done. Um, Maddie could do with a quilted jacket or gilet. That would be a nice idea, June. Oh, we could do a little patchwork one, couldn't we? I'll show you more of these on Wednesday. I thought I might um, bring her wardrobe down and, and show you because they're actually really sweet little 
little things, I think. This one again, this is the cover one, it's got poppers on it. So if you do want to um, pop those in your basket, if you haven't got any poppers, we do have those on the website at the moment. Don't forget your discount if you're a club member. Um, Elsie says, I want to take this opportunity to thank you for sharing your vast sewing knowledge, sewing knowledge with us. It has been a fun year for me trying the different projects on the Half Yard Sewing Club. Thank you, Elsie, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, yeah, Magnum won a prize as well. Andrew says, first time I've been able to catch you live since before Christmas because you've been away. And it's a birthday. Angela's birthday today. Happy birthday, Angela. And oh, I've, got, I've got a whole wardrobe full of hangers. Um, Megan, I only got them off eBay. But so they're, they're really sweet, aren't they? They make a nice display. And I have used them throughout the book as well. So when we go on Crate and Craft, we're going to have the whole display of them on the hangers as well. So... All through the book, where are they? I say all the, oh, there we go. Just use them to display all the clothes like that. So yeah, they are, they are quite sweet. So they're just toddler size. They're not special doll ones or anything like that. The fleece for the reindeer, I'm not sure, Sharon. I'm not, I'm not sure what, what we've got in stock off the top of my head. Shall we have a look? I'll have, I'll have a look in a minute because I want to show you some sale items as well that we've got on there. So those are the fat quarters. If you want to order those, I would be quick because I don't think they're going to last too much longer. Now, we've also got some yarn. Um, the yarn that I use for um, the girls, I can't get hold of anymore. Um, I actually bought it from the Netherlands and they've stopped making it and I can't find it anywhere else. If anybody else knows where there is a, a wholesaler that we can buy twisted yarn from then do let me know um, but we do have some acrylic yarn just going on the website today i've only got blonde at the moment and it's 100 grams now maddie will take 50 grams but to be honest if you can put a little bit more in there um, it makes her hair really nice and thick so we're just kind of trialing this see if you like it and if you do want more colors then just let us know and um, we'll try and get more stock in but it's just a plain acrylic yarn so no, nothing special at all, but there's loads of it and it's quite a good price as well. Amy, hello. 6 a.m. in New Jersey. You taught me how to sew, Debbie. I knew nothing. You're an excellent teacher. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Amy. Oh, that's really sweet of you. Thank you. Hello, Bettina in Australia. Happy New Year to you too. Loads of people on Facebook saying happy birthday to you, Angela. Hope you're having a lovely day. Um, who else have we got? Sue joined the Half Yard Club on Christmas Day. How does the discount work for the club? Whoops. Does it take it off automatically? No, Sue. The Half Yard Sewing Club is a different website to the Debbie Shaw Sewing uh, website. Completely different companies, owned by different people, different everything. But if you go onto the Half Yard Sewing Club website and go to, is it my blog or about me? It's, it's one of the two. Um, there is a post with the discount code. So make a note of what the code is. And when you go to the Debbie Shaw Sewing website, I'll show you. When you go to check out, um, mouse not working, then there is a coupon box. So if I do that, do that. This is the Debbie Shaw Sewing website. And I'd like you to have a look, if you fancy a bit of shopping, at special offers. Because we have over 300 sale items on here. And some of these are quite new and a lot of them really heavily discounted. Now, if you are a club member, you'll get a 10% uh, discount on top of that as well. So if I go to the last page, so look, 324 results. Um, these are some of the ones. People tend, to be honest, to look at the most recent added. If you go to the, the first ones, you might find some things that you didn't even know that we had. Tubular ribbing, for example. I think we've only got a couple of colours of those left now. We've got birthday cards or greetings cards that are sewing themed. And badges, we've got purse frames, pin cushions, sewing boxes. The tilde yarn, by the way, um, we do have some of that in stock. So if you wanted a different colour, I haven't got any here to show me. We've got lampshades and ribbons and toweling. Now, for instance, okay, I want to order some glitter knit fabric in grey. So add that to your cart. View cart. And then here it says 
coupon code. So if you're a Half Yard Zone Club member, you put the code in here and apply coupon. If you've received a gift voucher, you put your code in here and apply coupon, and that will automatically take the amount off the um, off there. So what have we got new as well? Oh, we've got button boxes. There are 100 buttons in here. They're two centimeters across and um, lots of different colors there. That's that Robin Chunky acrylic yarn, saying £2.50 or 100 grams. I think that's really pretty good. Um, and then those are your fat quarters and some of the new fabrics that we have. If you're going to go for the Maddie book, by the way, and you want it signing, uh, let me know who you want it signing to. I, I scribble my name in all the books anyway when you buy from me. But if you want it signing to anybody particular, then let me know. Um, when you go to, hang on a minute, go back to my basket and view cart. There's a bit, maybe it's when we go to checkout. Down here, order notes. So if you want a book signing to anybody particular, put it in there on order notes. Um, those are notes that we pick up, whoever's dealing with the orders. Um, the one thing that we can't do is uh, delivery instructions. So because we can't, with raw mail certainly, you, you can't give them delivery instructions. Um, right, I'm missing loads of your comments, so sorry about that. Oh, Patricia, three years ago, started to s learn to sew from, from my tutorials. Thank you. And now doing soft sculpture, art, and into designer bag making. Congratulations. Um, hobby, I'm not sure. I can't remember. I might have been, because uh, is, it, is it Denmark or Holland, Megan? I can't remember. But I don't think they do it anymore. Or certainly not in, in natural colours for hair. I sh I'll, I'll have another look. Um, so Sue, that's answered you. Hi Anne, missed over Christmas. Yeah, I didn't. I had a day off on Wednesday. Hello. Uh, Laura, hello from Thailand. She's back next week. <laughs> Not missing anything except the cat. Oh. Right, those are, the, those are those button boxes. They're quite nice little buttons, uh, little boxes as well for when you finish using your buttons because you can take the dividers out and make them bigger if you wanted to. Um, Sheila took up sewing in lockdown, so you're a new sewer as well. June's just changed her subscription from monthly to yearly. Thank you. Hi, Jo. Um, right, so Half Yard Club. It's the first tomorrow, is it not? So you get your next project, which is a, a little bit wonky. So this is your wonky draft excluder. So it's all appliqued with free motion embroidery and if you're new to free motion embroidery this is a perfect project because it's wonky so we want a little bit of wonky stitching and we want some frayed edges and we don't want it to be absolutely perfect because that would be no fun in wonky world would it so there, there will be a video well there is a video for this as well which you'll get um tomorrow that will um that will go onto the website tomorrow morning what you'll also get is the first block of your brand new block of the month. I'll show you that in just a minute because we've still got some left. And if you haven't seen it before, well, even if you have, you're going to see it again because it's amazing. <coughs> so this is it. It is 60 inches square. It's huge. And you've actually got 13 blocks. So your first block is in two colorways and you'll get the two of those tomorrow. And it's a quilt as you go. So I know a lot of you, a few hundred of you, have um, have already got your kits for this one. But if you haven't, or if you haven't seen it before, I just wanted to explain to you how it works. Because if you are a member, or if you join now, or whenever you join, this is going to be your first project for tomorrow. Um, you don't have to make it straight away. So that's going to be your first block. So that's how you make it. So you'll make up this section here and then quilt it. So you quilt it as you go along, not all in one go at the end, which is great if you're, um, you know, if you haven't got much space and you can't get the whole quilt underneath your sewing machine or a little bit nervous about doing that. This makes it so much easier. Now this has been designed and made by my, um, 
my friend Melissa, who is amazing. And this one, she's echo quilted, so she's just sewn outside the lines here. And then she's um, stippled or meandered in these pieces. You can quilt those however you like. On Wednesday, I thought, uh, Wednesday when we do um, a technique, we might do a little bit of quilting because I've had loads of questions. I'd, I think, I don't know, when, if, if, you're new to, if you're new to sewing, there's so many expressions and so many words that you don't understand, and me too. And when I mentioned before echo quilting, somebody came straight up and said, what's echo quilting? So I just thought we'd go through some of the quilting methods, if that's okay. So we'll look at echo quilting and we'll look at the meandering on Wednesday. I just need to make up some kind of block. I shan't make up this one because it's exclusive to the Half Yard Sewing Club. So I'll, I'll just make up something so that we can have a look at how to do that. So the... Echo quilting is just done on a sewing machine. And then this is free motion embroidery. But again, if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. So the idea is you just make that bit. And then I'm not sure which the second block will be in February, but say it's this one. Then you'll do February. Then you'll do March. And then you'll do April. Now, when we get to April, that's when we're going to show you how to do the sashing and the triangles in the corners as well. So basically how to put it together. So by April, if you wanted to start piecing them together, you've got one, two, three, four blocks that you can put together already. All right. And I will do a video for the Half Yard Club members to show how to do that. I think it's you, Jennifer. We're in focus here. Absolutely fine. Um, Daryl says, never done the meandering, looking forward to having a go at it. Yeah, I mean, there's loads of different ways of quilting. This one, for instance, is stitched in the ditch, which is stitching over the seam. Now, personally, I can't, I'm not too accurate doing this. Melissa is amazing. She's got all of them. So she's actually stitched over every single one of these seams. But if you're not too confident about sewing in the exact place here, then... Um, you can just echo quilt by sewing to one side, which would be a little bit better than that. So again, I, I'm, I'm not sure um, which one's which, which order it's going to go in, but um, that you will get four blocks by April and then we start putting them together like that. Okay, so that's that. So I know that's the first block and there are two of them but in different colours. So now if you wanted to make this exact, um, using these exact fabrics, we have put a kit together and it's for the top, right? Right. So everything that you need for the top, including the dark grey, the slate grey, the white, and there's enough to make the, um, the binding as well. That's in the kit. What you won't have is fabric for the back. Now, some of you have gone completely different for the back. Some of you have gone for the same fabrics. Melissa's gone completely different. If you wanted to use the same fabrics as the front, you'll need two and a half meters of white and then one meter of whatever contrast you wanted to go for there. So when we do have those fabrics on their own on the website as well. Of course, you don't have to make it in these colours. Um, some of you are making it purely in black and white, and I can't wait to see those because I think that would be, excuse my mic, that would look amazing. And if you've got lots of fabrics and you want to make it in rainbow colours or pastels or printed, then that's entirely up to you. But if you wanted to go for the kit that we have. Um, hello, Lisa in Texas. Broke two needles with free motion. <laughs> um, we'll, have, we'll have a go on Wednesday. We'll do both of those. So this is what we got. So that's your colour guide. Again, no backing fabric in this one. But you'll have two metres of white on white. You'll also have two metres of the slate grey. And then, just double check the colours on this, half a metre of pink. These are all by 112 centimetres wide. You've got half a metre of olive and then half a metre of royal. And these are fat quarters, so a fat quarter of orange, a fat quarter of turquoise, a fat quarter of mustard and a fat quarter of light blue. So that's everything that's included in the kit 
There are no instructions in the kit. You need to be a Half Yard Club member. It comes in a box as well. You need to be a Half Yard Club member to get the instructions. But remember, you get the first lot of those tomorrow. Um, yes, that's, that is quilting as you go, Joyce. So every individual block is backed and quilted as you sew. So that's the back. If you can see the design on there, it's quilted all the way through. So you make up the top, the patchwork top, then you put your wadding on the back of it, then you put your backing on. You might need some 505 spray as well um, to hold it all together if you wish. And then you quilt through the whole lot. Then you'll trim it down to, I think it's 12 and a half inches off the top of my head, and then put that to one side. So it's just that area there. And then the sashing, and the borders are done later when you join the whole thing together. So at no point you have the whole lot underneath your machine. And you don't have to... It can, finding space to even lay out a quilt... <coughs> gosh, excuse me. Of this size to then put the backing fabric on um, and put the wadding on because it's all got to be flat when you do it. That can be quite, quite tricky for a lot of us if we don't have the luxury of, of vast amounts of space. So this way, the only space you need is about that big for the top, the middle and the bottom and the quilting of it as well. That's no problem, Megan. Congratulations. Oh, hi, Mary Bennett. Happy New Year to you too. Um, have to go out soon. So, Happy New Year to you, Yvonne. She's off. She's off in a minute. Um, hi, Joan. Ah, I think I'm a bit behind with Facebook. Sarah says, first time making a quilt, excited and very nervous in equal measures. I love the use of the word meandering. I do that all the time with the straight line. <laughs> You'll be an expert at this one then, Sarah. <laughs> Uh, did I say hello to Lisa from Texas? Can't remember. Well, hello again anyway. Happy New Year to you, Julie Jones. So, should we do some sewing? I think that's all I've got to show you. Let me have a look in the book. So, again, I'm so, so not prepped for this today. Going off to see my sister after this as well, so I'm looking forward to that. It's 60 by 60 inches by 60 inches, Lisa, if it's the if it's the quilt you meant. Um, oh, I was going to tell you how much flesh coloured fabric you need for Maddie, wasn't I? Hold the line a moment. You will need um, 42 by 17 inches of skin coloured fabric. So that's 106 by 43 centimetres, so half a metre. If you order half a metre of fabric, that's going to be enough to make her. Right. Oh, thanks, Lisa. Have you added the link for Half Yard Sewing Club? There you go, she's done it. She's on the ball, is Lisa. My black cat sage is sat and says hello to you. Meow. I've not said hello to a cat before. Meow. Can I explain how to attach knitted cuffs? I can, Leslie. I need to get some knitted cuffs to explain that, so we can have a look at that. Um, Dawn's got a pink parcel just arrived. Are we allowed to make my doll to sell? Of course you can, Nicola. You can do what you like with them. Go make yourself some money out of her. Um, how did Wednesday go? How was your meal you prepared? How's Tyler? Tyler's just about better. He's on antibiotics at the moment, but uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's just about over. It lasted a long time. Um, and dinner, what did we do? Mexican, wasn't it? Yeah. Tyler was going to do it, but he wasn't well enough, so I did it myself. And it was very nice, if I say so myself. Thank you very much. Nice to see all the kids as well. Love, have, love have, having everyone together like that. Um, right, so I, I was just flicking through some books just to come up with some ideas as to what to do. And this is um, Sewing Room Secrets. This is a range of books that I'm writing. There's more to come. But this is how to use your sewing machine. Or oh, things to make with your sewing machine. I'll just, I wasn't going to show you actually, but I'll show you anyway. So in here, there is instructions, or hints and tips um, with ideas 
and advice. So things to look out for when you're choosing a sewing machine. So for a brand, a brand new sewer, this is ideal. This is um, a book of things that you need, not necessarily what you want. So a bit of an overview of your sewing machine, what happens when things go wrong, like stitches, stitches skipping and fabric slipping. That's a lot of S's. Um, sewing machine needles, what they mean and different types of fabrics. Obviously not every type of fabric that there is in the world, but um, the ones that you're going to be using most often. Um, explanation of different types of wadding, interfacing, threads, how to store things, and then some techniques. Now with each one of the techniques, that's what we're going to make, there's a project to go with it. So there's a pin cushion, there's um, an article about zips and then how to put a zip in the back of a cushion cover that you make. There's free motion embroidery and shearing and then using applique and shearing to make the little dress. So there's 10 actual projects. That's a toaster cover which is quilted using meandering and trapunto. So that's a, a padded heart, padded from the back. That's something that we could do one day, couldn't we? So bag making, how to fit lots of clasps and things. There's a tablet case to make how to make your own purse, a tote bag, bolster pillow, and a sewing machine mat. But that's the one that we're going to make at the moment. Now, I think, I wrote this a while ago, there is a template for the heart. I think there's a template for the heart. Or do I tell you how to make it? Making a template. No, I'll show you how to make a template. There you go. So we're going to make a template for this one. Might be a slightly different shape because um, the scissors that I'm going to use are bigger than the ones that I use there. And I've got my paper scissors, so I just I thought we'd make one for that. So we'll make it in a slightly different size. Okay. Um, came later. The one could all stop on half yard. Clock. It'll be tomorrow, Julie. Tomorrow it goes on there. So I've got that. Have I got some ribbon? Yes! On the floor. It's where I keep my ribbon. Right, so. And some paper to make a template. And a circle. So I'm running out of time, June, honestly. I've got, um, when I'm driving home, my, my sister lives about uh, an hour and a half away from me. So Gary will be driving um, this afternoon and in that hour and a half I'm going to be proofreading my gnomes book. It's, uh, it's another one. I've, I do a series of books called So. This is So Gnomes. So there was um, So Advent Calendars and So Bunting. Uh, no, I, I can't remember the others. Um, but this one's going to be so gnomes. It's not out till next year, but um, I'll, I'll be proofreading that on the way. So I, I try to fit as much in as I can. I don't sit still for too long. Um, so Happy New Year for oh, Bell in Australia, which is 10.40 night time and about 24 degrees very warm. I'm, I'm, I'm so looking forward to the warmer weather. Uh, which machine did you go for? Oh, talking to Lisa. Right. So let's make a template first. And I've just clicked off that and then need to click back on again. So I'm going to fold this in half. I've got a circle template which is about four inches across. And I'm just going to overlap the edge of the circle to this, um, to the fold, and draw around it. And then take my ruler. I could have found a smaller one. I'm going to put my scissors on there to just to make sure the heart's going to be the right size. And I need to come down to about here. That's going to be quite a big one. And then just draw a line from the edge of the circle down to the point. So that's that's a half heart. What do you call a half heart? It's <laughs> it's it's half hearted. And then we'll cut it out. And I think I might make the, the centre of the heart a little bit deeper. So I'll show you that. Yeah. So that's that. And when I open it up, I'd like that to be a little bit deeper in the centre there. So, hello, little first time viewer. Welcome along. So I'm just going to curve that down a little bit more. 
and I prefer that shape. So easy, easy way of making a heart. Um, pop that there. And then I'm going to use some of this new fabric. I think I'll, I'm going to use the zebra one. I like the zebra one. So, whoops. The first thing I'm going to do is to create a seam at the back which is where I'm going to stuff it if I can find my scissors. I'd, oh, there we go. Didn't do any sewing on Wednesday, so things got, got cleared away a little bit. So I'm going to cut a piece of fabric, just one piece, slightly larger than my heart template. And then I'm going to cut this in half and sew it back together again so I've got a seam down the back of the heart. It is an ice cream cone shape, you're right, Janet. And snip down here. Okay. And then sew that back together again. Um, did you manage to catch when the nose book is coming out? No, it's not finished yet. Well, it, well, it's finished. It just needs proofreading. Then it needs to go off to be printed and everything. So um, I think it might be October time next year. It takes that long. Is everything you're saying? It, it does, Jenny. I <laughs> scissors particularly. N nothing normally moves from here, but I lose everything. It's, it's a bit bizarre. Um, right. So I just sew those back together again. you're clever you could pattern match it so I've got that and where's my iron gone <laughs> can you see me iron anywhere it's what happens when you tidy up isn't it I should just leave it messy <gasps> I think I took it to create and craft and I haven't brought it back down again never mind we don't need an iron we can finger press this open could buy another one, couldn't I? I've got enough on the website. In fact, no, we don't on the website. We need to get those back in stock. Uh, Gillian's prize arrived this morning. So that's that. So this I'm going to place over the seam. And maybe easier to draw around that, actually. Oh, I'll tell you what, we can cut two at the same time, can't we? Or unfold. That's it. And then just draw around the edge. I can hear it starting to rain on my roof. It gets a bit noisy, you know, the rain's heavy. We have um, a partridge in, not a partridge, uh, a pheasant in the garden, if you hear the noise. And it was, it was so nice the other day. Uh, we looked out of the garden, there were two of them, two male ones because they have hunts around here, which I really don't like, or shoots, as they call them. So I think these two have kind of escaped. So I'm hoping they stay. So there I've got the heart for the back, and that's got the seam down it. I can snip the top of that off. Right. Oh, Susan's husband got her a signed copy of the book. Oh, well done. <laughs> Right, so the second half, I can just use this as a template. And we could fussy cut that, couldn't we? I'll just pop that over the zebra there and cut around it. Um, scissors under there. I've run out of the twin modding for the quilt. Oh, I should have mentioned that, shouldn't I? We'll try and get some more of that back in stock again. I am sure my daughter's watching. So we can get some more on order for that. Yes, a, a twin wadding will be a well perfect size for the quilt with some left over. I think twin wadding is 72 by, I can't remember what it is, but you'll have a little bit left over. Um, the quilt is 62, uh, 60 inches square, so you need a little bit bigger than that. But of course, 
it's a quilt as you go so you don't need to have the quilt all in one big piece so if you have got some smaller pieces they, well, let's say 13 inches square then that's going that's going to work as well uh, oh little sick in bed with a f cold and a flu that came on suddenly oh did I cut the zebra's head off no it didn't no it didn't it's there look right and then I'll need a pocket on the front which I think I'm going to do in a in a different fabric should do the pocket in that one so put that to one side and all right Bloodwin needs some some um, some quilt uh, some wadding I'll, I'll ask him to look into it won't be till later on next week because all of our supplies have been off it's taken Christmas off isn't it nice when you can do that I wouldn't know what to do with myself to be honest we didn't take any time off apart from Wednesday okay so let's determine the size of the pocket that we want on the front so again it's for these scissors they're going to go in there so I think the pocket should be about here so I'm just going to fold that over and that's going to be my pocket So I'll cut again two pieces out of this one. Concentrating, so I shut up when I'm concentrating. There and there. That. So that's the pocket to go on the front, and that's all the fabric that I need. So that is how that's going to look. And the scissors will sit in there like that. What I also need to do is put a ribbon through here. Because at the moment that's going to fall out, isn't it? So again, place your ribbon, uh, your scissors where you want them to be. Which is right in the centre of my zebra. And then length of ribbon, it doesn't need to be that long. I'm going to sew that just over the spot there, right in the middle. So you can pin that in place if you wish and mark it and make it very accurate and everything, but I know where that was going to go, so right in the centre there. And just backwards and forwards a few times to make it nice and secure. And that's that. Then we'll sew together those two triangles for the little pocket, right sides together across the top. And then we'll fold this over. And again, I'd normally press that if I got my iron with me and then top stitch across here. Without it disappearing into the sewing machine. If you can possibly help that. And then we'll pop that on top of there. So just matching up the seams at the bottom. And let's fold this ribbon out of the way. And place the back on top. So make sure you don't sew through the ribbon. And then we're going to sew all the way around the edge. So I'll have a few pins to hold that in place. The reason you didn't cut the pocket on the fold no reason at all june just never thought <laughs> that would have been a good idea julia I'd, around about a quarter of an inch i'd, I'd use for this the, that would seem was a little bit more but quarter of an inch will be absolutely fine and then we'll sew all the way around the edge 
Hello, Ritesh. Very late. Um, lighting always looks dark when you go to the sewing machine camera. Yeah, I could, I could do with lightening it a little bit, but um, didn't get round to it. So I'll, I'll do it for Wednesday. Sorry. It's moody. So right down to the point. Back down this side. Be careful as you go around the curve because this is going to form the shape of the pin cushion. When you get into the V shape here, we're going to stop, do one stitch across, and then carry on. And that helps the, the V shape to stay pointy. So again, nice and steady around the curve. And back down to where I started. Now he's, he's, um, he's gone on errands, Lisa. We're, so we're nipping over to my sister's and um, she's on medication so she can't drink alcohol. So he's gone out to buy a, a bottle of alcohol-free uh, fizz. So he can have a glass of plonk for New Year's Eve. That's what he's doing, so no coffee for me today. We've run out of white on white fabric. Joyce, if you go onto the waiting list, um, these are all fabrics that we can get back in stock quite quickly. So if we have run out, um, we should be able to get some more by the end of the week. The suppliers are back in work again on Tuesday and obviously they're going to have a backlog of orders from over the week. So um, it might be towards the end of the week, but those are a particularly good suppliers that tend to send things out very quickly. So we'll, we'll get loads of that in for next time. Translation of your message, how beautiful it all looks in the background. I love it and all the best for the new year. Oh, thank you, June. I missed that. I missed, is it you? I missed her message. Thank you. Um, Jill's taking Christmas decks down today. Ours will probably come down to London. Down to London. I'm reading the next message. Ours will probably come down tomorrow. I'm not bringing them down to London. Hello, Sandra in Tennessee. Okay, so we've sewn all the way around the edge. I just need to unpick some of the stitches in that centre seam at the back. And the reason I've done it this way is purely because when this is hand sewn back up again, if my stitches aren't too neat, it's going to be at the back. Whereas if the stitches are right on the edge, as I said earlier, that's going to actually form the shape of the heart. So we don't want any kind of wonky stitching there. So let's... Oh, I cut the point off, didn't I? Let's make that a little bit tidier. So I've cut the point off, I've snipped into the seam here, and then we'll turn it the right side out. So it's a pin cushion stroke scissor holder app, is what we're making today. Let's push that through there. While I'm just doing this, um, I had an email from somebody earlier on saying that they were contacted through Facebook or messaged on Facebook on Christmas Day, I think it was after the live, from some chap that wants to be your friend. And I just wanted to say, please don't reply to things like that. It's nothing to do with me. You don't know who these people are. And they do tend to target lots of people at the same time, so it's not even personal. I've caught the ribbon in there when I'm saying don't catch the ribbon. So if anybody contacts you saying, oh, well, they want to be friends or whatever they're going to say, or they're paying you compliments or anything like that, then please just ignore it. Because um, you don't know who they are. Right, so let me just unpick that bit where I've sewn the ribbon through. As I'm saying, oh, keep the ribbon out of the way, don't sew through it. Just to show you what happens when you sew through the ribbon, because you can just unpick it and do it again. That's, that's why I did that. Oh, you got one for Christmas too. Oh, I, did the, I love this iron. It's very posh. Right. So I'm just going to pick that and sew over that bit again. We are making a pocketed heart-shaped pincushion today. Right. So where's the gap that I just cut? There. So I'm just going to re-sew over the bit I unpicked. No harm done. 
Hello, Silver and Kitty Me. So now we can stuff it. Uh, when I did bring some wadding, that's on the floor. It's where I keep my wadding as well as my ribbon. Here we go. Yeah, thanks, Jane. It is. You, you never know. You never know who these folks are, and there's not a lot I can do about it. Uh, oh, Melissa, Irene bought me this, and she did tell me where it came from, but I can't remember. So, can you remember, Irene? Somebody's asking where you bought it from. Um, how many sewing machines do I have? I have two that I use all the time. So my DX7, these are quite new, so I, I, I normally only have one or two sewing machines. I have as many as I need, but I did treat myself. So my DX7 is my new one. This is the one that I use for all of my videos and all the demonstrations down here. I also have a Juki straight stitch machine, which I do most of my work on, because most of my work involves only a straight stitch and it's blooming fast. So that's, uh, that's down in my studio. So that's, that's the one I use all the time. I do have a Janome 660, which I've had for years and it needs repairing, which is one of the reasons why I thought it's about time I had a new sewing machine. And I have two Elna 570As. One of them is the one that I used to use down here. And the other one is, um, actually it's Kim's, it's one that I bought Kim, but that's in her little studio over there, that's not, so that's not really mine at all. Um, so, three. Well, four, but one doesn't work, so three sewing machines. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I can't justify having lots and lots of sewing machines just for the sake of having lots of sewing machines. I have what I need, because they are expensive. Right, okay, so... That's that. Maybe the ribbon should have gone a little bit further down. Um, scissors pop in there and tie through there. So nice little gift idea this as well, I think. So that keeps those in place. I'd only do this if I'm maybe traveling or I'm not going to be sewing for a while because if you're going to undo a bow every time you took your scissors out, then um, you're not gonna bother doing it, are you? So that can be trimmed off a little bit there, and that can be trimmed off a bit there. And should have shown you this before Christmas, shouldn't I? Making Christmas presents, I know a lot of you have. And then I've got a hole at the back that I need to sew up. I just thought I'd, I'd show you that so you get an idea of the way that it works. And I, I have an earl. I might not have a needle. Oh, there we go. So I do have a needle. So I'll just sew that together with a ladder stitch at the back. And, and I'm a little bit behind with uh, doing videos for these things. So um, this is one that I will do a, a video for YouTube when I get the chance, but it might not be till next week. Sylvia loves a straight stitch machine too. I uh, just got my muddy book already made her in the old style and can't wait like, to make her again. Since I made the first muddy, I've welcomed a new granddaughter. Congratulations! <gasps> uh, right, what's that? Still have an unpicker that came with the brother sewing machine my dad bought me when I was 13 or 14, nearly half a century old. Wow, Jean. They go blunt. You, uh, you, must, you must be one of those sewers that just doesn't need to use an unpicker. My, my thread's gone really curly for some reason. Um, made a leek and potato soup for lunch today. Nice. Got a new soup maker, has Deirdre. <clears throat> so, into one side. I like to start inside the gap because I can hide the knot inside there. So I've just gone into one side of the seam and then go across to the opposite side. I'm overlapping with the machine stitches slightly here and then go back again. So try and keep the stitches as small as you can because that means the seam's stronger and the stitches won't be too noticeable. So if you can keep to four or five millimetres or no more than a quarter of an inch apart would be ideal. And I'm literally going into one side across to the other and every few stitches pull that tight to close it. So let me do it up here so you can see a bit better. So this is a ladder stitch. You go in one side and out, just in the fold of the fabric, in that side and out. And you can see that the thread literally going from one side to the other like a ladder 
across the open seam and then every four or five stitches we're just going to pull that thread and close the seam over. So I know you've seen this a lot but um, you're going to need to use this stitch when you're making muddy or if you're mending a split seam in a garment or on the lining of a pocket maybe you've got a hole in it and of course on and anything stuffed like this to make the stitches practically invisible so again every few stitches pull that to close out Oh, thank you, Deirdre. Yeah, these are some of the newer fabrics that we've got on the website. They're beautiful. We've, we've only got the set of three of these, or three from the collection, and they're lovely. The elephant's been the most popular one out of those. Uh, what's everyone doing later? Going out or staying in? We'll be at home, so we're going to see my sister in a bit when I've finished here, and then we don't normally do anything on New Year's Eve. We've got Tyler with us today, but probably she can't see him. <laughs> Okay, so I'll just finish that up. As I may have mentioned, I got a Debbie Shaw sewing voucher in the family stand on Wednesday. Do I need to wait and use it all in one go? No, you don't. Um, if you... Hmm. If you put your voucher in there, say you've got a voucher for £20 and you're spending 50 it will take off the £20. If you've got a voucher for £50 but you want to spend 20 it'll take 20 off the voucher. So you can't actually split the voucher up and use a little bit here and a little bit there. But if you're, if you're spending more, if you're spending less than the voucher is worth, it'll, it'll reduce the amount of the voucher by the amount that you've spent. Does that make sense? Oh, bye Joan. Happy New Year. See you again next week. And staying in, go to bed at normal time. I know, I'd, I like to stay up and I like to see what's going on on TV, but I, I, I can't, I'm just exhausted. I think I'd normally end up falling asleep about 10 and then waking up when Gary nudges me to say, it's next year now. Mm. Okay, that's finished. So again, you, you can make it in any size that you like. Um, I've got a bit of the, the fluff coming through there, but that's quite neat at the back. Make the pocket deeper or smaller. Don't have to put a pocket on the front. If you make a little hanging heart, you could just put a ribbon at the top of it there and hang it up. If you wanted to scent it, you could put a few drops of essential oil on the wadding when you put it in there, or drop a little bit of lavender or something smelly in there as well. Did you know, Debbie, that we can zoom in on YouTube to get a closer look at your stitching? No! No! I did, oh, I went, so only dogs could hear me then, I don't know why. I didn't know you could do that. I don't watch YouTube that often, to be honest. I d how do you do that? How do you do that, Brenda? Let me know, how do you do that? <laughs> Jean said she used to send her outside just before midnight with a piece of coal. He was a miner. Um, Shall I impress Star Wars? It says expires never. Yeah, so no, we don't put an expiry date on. We don't do that. Um, can watch this on Catra. Yes, you can watch on Catra. It's always there, Kim. Going to be a sad news for me as my hubby passed on the 22nd of December. Oh, no. Oh, I'm sorry, Ellen. I would, we're, we're, all, we're all thinking of you. Thank you for being with us today. Hopefully we've, um, we've been a bit of company for you. So the funeral's on the 4th, so you can be with us on the 3rd as well. If you, if you want to come along on the 3rd and have a chat, then do. Um... <laughs> how? How? Brenda, you've got to say how. People are saying, I didn't know you could do that. You put your fingers on the screen and pull apart. Oh, right, so you need to be on a smartphone or a tablet. Didn't know you could do that. Let me have a look. Going to have a go at this. Bear with me, sir. So, what random video pops up? Um... What have I got? Oh, I don't want to look at that. No, I don't want to change my life with that. Graham Norton's popped up. Let's see. Let's see if we can do that. Oh, you can. Oh, look. I don't. I don't know who he is. Oh, there's Graham Norton. I'm sure I can show him. Didn't know he could do that. Oh, hello, Ed. 
fancy. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my face just grew, says Chris. <laughs> oh, don't go too close. You'll see all my wrinkles. Um, right, so I'm done. Happy New Year to you, Marilyn, too. So I'm going to be back again on Wednesday and we'll look at echo quilting and meandering. We'll do two quilting techniques on Wednesday. And we could do that for a few weeks, actually, or maybe maybe for next next Wednesday as well and show you a different technique there as well. Um, oh, thank you, Linda. Happy New Year to you too. We can hunt for the mouse. I don't know what the mouse is. Uh -huh. In the same place as last week. So yeah, I'll see you next year. Hi, Rita. I shall see you next year. <laughs> so, um, Happy Hogman. Oh, of course, happy Hogman Day to you too. Thank you for all of your well wishes. Um, I want to say as well, thank you for your support over the last 12 months. It's, um, it's been quite an amazing journey. Um, our, our little team's building. Now we've taken Tyler on as well. So there's me, Kim, Gary and Tyler uh, working on, on this side of everything. Thank you to everyone who's joined the Half Yard Club as well. You're keeping us going and hopefully you're enjoying all of the projects too. Don't forget that uh, it's January the 1st tomorrow. So that's when your next project and the new block of the month is coming out. Um, so check out if you've, if you've got some time spent tomorrow and you haven't got a hangover then check out the Half Yard Sewing Club website and uh, you'll see all of your new projects on there. So here's to a bright and prosperous 2023. I know I can't believe it's coming around so quickly. So um, we've got lots of great plans. Hopefully there's going to be lots of things that we can keep you busy with over the next 12 months and um, enjoy your company in these lives every Saturday and Wednesday afternoons. So again thank you. Wouldn't be here doing any of this if it wasn't for you lot. So thank you. So have a happy new year and um, I'll see you all next year, as Rita said. Bye-bye.